Today we're gonna to discuss what to do when you're squatting and the bar starts to turn on you. So I think you'll probably understand that it's not the bar having a mind of its own, it's not the bar's fault. The bar only moves because we put forces on it. So you have to understand where the forces are coming from. And to, to make things pretty simple, generally, we look at the hips first. The hips are a nice place for us to um, start to control things because our glutes, our quads, those are all very strong. Our hips are closer to the ground and that's where the forces come from. We don't just create them out of nothing here. We have to push against something and that is the earth in this case. Um, now, so if I am squatting down and if I, we're gonna pretend that I'm looking from the top down, right? And my bar turns clockwise, that is my left side comes forward, my right side goes back. That is generally the cause of a tight left back pushing the back forward, a tight right ab pulling the abs backward, and I get this twisting action. Uh, with that, you'll see in the hips, the right one we turn into, the left one we turn out of. And I am exaggerating all of this so you can see it. It's usually a little bit more subtle. So we have to think about spinning motion, transverse plane actions. What can we do to control this stuff? Generally, if I'm spinning toward a side, I want that glute to turn on because that glute max, the big one, is really good at spinning your hips. Okay, and I, you know, I feel it right there. If you don't feel it doing this, try it a couple times. Make sure your foot is staying flat and push off. Um, some things to look at. So look at the feet. Sometimes the feet will tilt like this. Okay, my right foot, I'll lose my arch. And my left foot, I'll find a lot of arch, too much arch. I'll lose my heel. Okay, so as I come down, it might look like this. Okay. It's pretty subtle, but I'm trying to show you what it might actually look like so you know what you're looking for. Now, as I squat down, tight back pushes me forward. Let's, let's stop exaggerating so much. Tight back pushes me forward, and then I come up like this. And oftentimes, when someone's really practiced in their squatting, you're not going to notice it here. But then you'll notice it here when they start coming up. What's that about? So. As we come down, we don't need as much force because we're not overpowering the bar. We're letting the bar overpower us. It takes more force to overpower the bar, to bring everything up. So as we come down, then we're, we're okay here and we're good sometimes even when we stop, but then we have to overpower the bar, we start to tilt, okay? I know I'm being repetitive, but some of these concepts are complicated for some people. And it's very important that you understand where this is coming from because then you can understand how to fix it. So if I'm twisting that way, and I'm gonna tell you oftentimes, pretty much every time, it's always that way, um, that turning to the right, that clockwise rotation when we're looking from the top down. We gotta address two major things. So I talked about this the left back and the right ab, those are not the two major things, those are the one major thing. So we gotta address this area, this midsection, first and foremost. I know I talk a lot about the hips and I think the hips are a good driver, but if my back is still directing my forces that way, even if I have uh, uh, symmetrical hip forces coming out of there, it's still gonna turn everything this way. Everything gets directed this way. So I have to secure myself over toward the side that I'm turning away from. And you know, maybe you even want to overemphasize it a little bit. If you're biasing yourself this way so much, it might be a good teaching tool to bias yourself the other way occasionally. And as you come down, you just try to hang on to that and you come back up. Now, after number one, after getting the abdominal region, the core region, then we need to talk about the hip region here. So again, it's the same turning. It's this clockwise rotation to the right. We turn our hips to the right. My belt buckle turns and faces the right. So as we come down, if we're turning into a hip, we want to 
teach ourselves to come out of that hip. If we turn into a hip, we shut off a glute or we lengthen a glute, it's probably a better term. We lengthen a glute and we need that glute to shorten to help us come back to center and maybe even bias over to the other side. Now, you're gonna note if you do this, you're gonna be instantly weaker. It's very difficult to do for some people. Some people do it naturally. Some people are always symmetrical. Some people though, like myself, if left to their own devices, will default this way pretty quickly, okay? And coming this way is really uncomfortable. So what we need to do, we need to continue to reinforce these positions. We need to reinforce turning counterclockwise at both the hips and at the midsection. We need to teach ourselves how to use our lower outer abdominals, our oblique abdominals, transversus abdominis. We need to have a little bit of tone there. We need to feel that a little bit while we're doing our squats. Again, if you're feeling stuff like this, if you're really cognizant of what you're doing, you're probably gonna get weaker. As you, you know, as you become more animalistic, you go, you revert down into your less thoughtful portions of your brain and you don't access all those feelings quite so much. Your body knows what's going on, but you're not really thinking about it all that much. When you're re-educating yourself, when you're teaching yourself how to do something new, you are thinking about those things and it's necessary. Eventually the goal is to be unconsciously competent, not consciously competent, unconsciously competent. You want to do it like you're a natural. You want to do it automatically. Okay, so we talked about turning. Big muscles involved here. We've got the glute, which we talked about ad nauseum, but you also need to think, what's going to help receive this? What's going to pull me over to this side? Or what's going to prevent me from coming over to the other side? Usually, one glute being too loose or too long means the other glute is too short. So what we'll have to do is lengthen that glute, believe it or not. I still want you to be able to feel it while you're doing your squat. You should be able to still load it, but it needs to lengthen a little bit so that it can contract better and so that you can turn your hips and reorient yourself forward. I think I've given you plenty to marinate on here. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you want example exercises, I would challenge you to try to come up with one on your own. What can get me this or what can get me this to help turn me out of my problem? What can, and you gotta practice, right? You, you gotta learn how to get comfortable there. If you don't have anything, just leave a comment below and I'll help you out.